It's time for Friday Follies, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. This episode of Bells in the Bat Fray was originally released July 11th, 2017. Oh, lovey, it is a wonderful evening to take a walk around our neighborhood. Ah, yes, yes, let's walk by where that new person has moved in. Perhaps we can catch him outside. Good idea, my dear. Perhaps we can uh, invite him over for a game of whist. Yes, yes, it's right over here. And oh, my! <coughs> Stop screaming, Herman, and call the authorities! All right, I'm here. How do you open this door? How do you get out of this dang car? Wait, okay, wait, I push this. Okay. All right, I'm the neighborhood watch. What's going on? Oh, uh, this lawn. Oh, look at it if you can stand it. Oh, no, it's horrible. All right, let me take a look at it. Oh, my. This lawn is not trimmed within one quarter inch of the sidewalk. In the neighborhood justice system, the people are represented by two separate but equal groups. The neighborhood watch patrols, who oversee the condition of the lawns. And the neighborhood association, that prosecutes those whose lawns are not up to standards. This is Lawn Order. Hello, this is John Bell. Welcome you to episode number 168 of Bells in the Bat Free. We're going to take a bit of an educational turn now. I have Dr. Winifred Comfries with me today, who is a proponent of the controversial new fish diet. Yes, indeed. That is the uh, fish diet, which I am uh, a proponent of. Uh, We've always heard that fish is brain food. Do you agree with that? I don't know. It has nothing to do with my proponency of the uh, fish diet. So is it more of a weight loss or weight control type of diet? Well, I don't really know because uh, those that uh, take part in the fish diet, um, I haven't been keeping track of their uh, weight loss. Then what is the advantage of the fish diet? The main advantage of the fish diet is uh, not starving to death. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... uh What does the fish diet consist of? Largely worms and bugs. I thought the fish diet consisted of fish. Oh, yeah, there's some fish in there as well, but mostly it's uh, worms and bugs. Ew, I guess that's a lot of protein, but how are they prepared? I don't know how you'd prepare a bug or a worm, but I guess you could uh, tell them to say their prayers and put a little blindfold on them. No, 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 no. I mean, are they cooked? or uh, mixed with some sort of spices? No, they're just gobbled up whole. And people eat these? Eat these? Ew, I would hope not. But you're describing the fish diet. Yes, and fish eat worms and bugs. So we're talking about a diet for fish. Well, guys, uh, what do you feed your fish? I don't have any fish. And why do you want to know about the fish diet? Listen, I was told... Excuse me, Mr. Bell. Yes, Arnie. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Well, I like seeing you too, Mr. Bell, but uh, we got a little bit of a problem here. You're telling me. Who booked this guest anyway? An officer from the neighborhood. What? Booked this guest? No. Has a fish to feed? No. Then what does he want? He wants to ask you some questions, Mr. Bell. About the fish diet? Of course not. He doesn't want to know about that, does he, Arnie? I really don't know, Mr. Bell. He just said he wanted to talk to you. I can leave you some worms. All right. For the worms? No, for seeing the neighborhood watch guy. I'll set him up in the conference room, Mr. Bell. We have a conference room? What you need is a fish tank. I didn't know a fish could drive one of those. One of? A fish tank. I didn't know they were that militaristic. I'll be right there, Arnie. So I guess my interview is, uh... Over, John. I guess it uh, would be. 3.46 p.m. The conference room. Did you want to see me? Are you, Mr. Bell? Yes, I am. Have a seat here at this conference table. Well, it's not as much a conference table, really, as it is a uh, snack table. Isn't this the conference room? Actually, it's more of a snack room. That explains the vending machines. 3.47 p.m. The snack room. What did you want to ask me? Do you have a quarter? A quarter? I wanted to get a bag of chips out of this machine, but I'm a little shy. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, here, here you go. All right, thank you. 
My name is Hendersnot. I'm sorry? Tell me about it. When you moved into this neighborhood, you were aware that we had certain rules. Is that not true? Oh, you mean the Homeowners Association. I didn't get my chips. I'm sorry? My chips. I pulled the lever here. My chips didn't fall down in the little tree thing. Oh, well, what number are you trying for? Uh, the Corn Goofies, number seven. Oh, that slot is empty. No, it's not. I see the Corn Goofies right there. But you're looking at the number that's above the Corn Goofies. Yeah, number seven. That's the Corn Goofies. No, the number for each selection is under the selection. Under the selection? Yeah, that'd be number 15. 15? Yeah, 15. Oh. You got a dollar and a quarter on you? You know, that quarter I gave you earlier was the last of my change. Oh. What were we talking about? Corn goofies? Yeah, that's it. The Homeowners Association. Oh, right. The Homeowners Association. There are rules that every homeowner must follow. Rules? The rules in the pamphlet that was given to you when you first moved in. I don't remember a pamphlet. It was tucked in with that basket of goodies you got. Oh, you mean that basket with the chocolate bunny and the corn goofies? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, didn't you read that pamphlet? It was stale. The pamphlet? No, the chocolate bunny. So you didn't read it? The chocolate bunny? Yeah, pamphlet. No, I... I guess I didn't read it. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, will you look at that? You just broke the glass on the front of the vending machine. No, I didn't. You did. You hit it with your elbow. It broke spontaneously. Spontaneous? Let me just pick up this bag of corn. Just tell me what this is. Yeah, mostly corn, fried up with some riboflavin, high fructose corn syrup, yellow dye number nine. I mean, why you're here to see me? Oh, you broke the rules, Mr. Bell. What rules did I break? Get on. Every law must be trimmed. I don't understand. What if you read your pamphlet? I mean, I don't understand what you're saying. Let me put it plain and simple, my bill. You broke the rules about maintaining your lawn, and there's a $20 fine. A $20 fine? Cash, check, or credit card. I guess I'll pay it in cash. Aha, you said you didn't have any cash. I said I didn't have any change. Here, twenty dollars. Oh, then, Mister Bell, don't pay that man a penny. I don't have a penny. You didn't have a quarter. Brad, what are you doing here? As your attorney, Mister Bell, I'm here to represent your best interests. Who is this person, Mister Bell? Why, I'm none other than. That's me. What the heck was that, Brad? What the heck was that? That's my jingle. Jingle? Yeah, jingle. It puts me, you know, top of mind. Sounds more like out of mind. Brad, what do you and your jingle want? I want justice. Blackjack justice? Well, I love that podcast. The name's Justice. Blackjack Black Justice. <laughs> and I'm Trixie Dixon, girl detective. <laughs> Are you guys through with the free plugs? Yeah. I suppose. Mr. Bell, I see this fine is an outrage. You should take this to court. Court? To the highest court in the land. Cheech and Chong? Brad, it's just a $20 fine. I'll pay it. No, Mr. Bell. We're taking this to court. If you want to, the Neighborhood Association Court is this Friday at 11. Friday, 11 a.m. Neighborhood Association Court, Mrs. Snood Glamper's Den. This hearing is now called to order. I believe a Mr. Uh, Montworth has something he wishes to say. I certainly do, Mrs. Crude Hamper. Snood Glamper! Yes, whatever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I intend to prove oh, that... Mr. Montworth! Yes? There is no jury here. There is only me. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mrs. Booty Pimple. Snood Glamper! Anyway, I'm going to prove that there has been a terrible miscarriage of justice, and I'm going to make sure that my client is ex. Exonerated of all charges. Are you done, Mr. Montworth? Yes, Mrs. Uh, yes, ma'am. You might want to mention who your client is and what he is charged with. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, my client is uh, that fellow over there, Mr. Bell, and he is uh, charged with uh, not keeping his lawn up. Uh,
Right. I uh, see. Uh, Mr. Bell, do you have anything to say? Uh, I'd like to just pay the fine. If Mr. That's... Bell has nothing to say. Sit down, Mr. Bell. Very well. Proceed with your case, Mr. Montworth. Fine. I'd like to call my first witness, Mr. Hendersnot. Uh, me? Yes, please step up to the witness chair. Which one is the witness chair? Um, how about this one right here? Oh, no, 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 no. That's a family heirloom. Priceless. Oh, okay. How about this one right over? Oh, no, 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 at least until Mr. Hintersnot washes his clothes. Hey, what are you saying, anyway? Uh, can we bring in a folding chair? I suppose we could bring in a chair I use for my whist club. Oh, get it, where is it? It's in the closet in the hall. All yeah, right, hold on. This closet here? Yes. This one here, right? Uh, yes. Oh, is this it? Yes. All right, let me bring it in here. All right. Let me set this thing up here. <sighs> Wait, uh, wait, how does this... Uh, no, you wait, have to pull, pull that out. No, no, you have to pull it out. Okay, this goes over there. Turn it all the way. I'd like to just pay the fine. Mr. Hendersnoot. Snot. What? Snot. Oh, how embarrassing. Anybody got a hanky? My name is Hendersnot, you little... I would like to show you Exhibit A. A phonograph. Yeah, when is this a phonograph of? I object, Your Honor. He's leading the council. He's your witness, Mr. Montworth. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the court reporter can strike that last comment. We don't have a court reporter. I can jot down stuff if you want. Oh, well, that'll be helpful, Mr. Hinder Snot. Will be helpful, Mr. Um, Hinder. Mr. Uh, Snot. Hinder Snot. Maybe uh, you should just uh, stick to being a witness. Stick to being. Hey! Give me that notebook! Hey! All right, Mr. Hendersnot, look at this picture. Tell me what you see. Hey, she grass. And what else? A sidewalk. Do you recognize that grass and sidewalk, Mr. Hendersneep? That's snot! Uh -huh. You testified it was grass. Are you changing your story? No, yeah, you're confusing me. Let's find out. Read back the testimony. You made me stop writing it down. Oh, yeah, okay, let's not uh, read back the... Uh... Mm. So, uh, this picture is a picture of the sidewalk in the grass at Mr. Bell's home. If you say so, that's fine. And the rules say that the grass has to be trimmed within one quarter inch of the sidewalk. Is that correct? Yes, them's the rules. I ask you then to look at the ruler that has been placed between the sidewalk and the grass. Can you read that number on that ruler? It looks like uh, half an inch. One half inch. Is that what you said? Wait, didn't you hear me? Is that what you... Yeah, that's what I said. It says half an inch. Now. Then I call the court's attention to the fact that Mr. Bell's grass is cut within half an inch of the sidewalk, which is much smaller than a quarter inch from the sidewalk. I'm sorry. What was that? Half an inch is smaller than a quarter inch. Therefore, Mr. Bell was well within the limitations no, of... No, it's not. Uh, so Can I just pay my fine? Sit down, Mr. Bell. Mr. Montworth, a half an inch is larger than a quarter inch. It is? Yes, it is. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not, and I will prove it here with this ruler on this desk. Ouch! I'm so sorry. I'll pay double the fine. Can you please make your point, Mr. Montworth? Look at this ruler. From here to here is a half inch. Yes. For the record. Yes, I see it. I agree. I concur. It is half an inch. Good. Now, I place this quarter on the table next to the ruler. As you can plainly see, this quarter is much larger than a half an inch. I'll pay everybody's fines. Mr. Montworth, a quarter inch has nothing to do with the quarter coin. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I'm sure it does. It doesn't. Who's asking you questions? You are. I'm your witness, you bullhead. A quarter inch is one-fourth of an inch. <laughs> and you'd like me... To believe that, I guess. I'm writing a blank check. Take what you need. Due to the evidence presented by Mr. Montworth, that's... Oh. As chairperson of the Neighborhood Association, it is my ruling that Mr. Bell pay the fine. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. And that Mr. Montworth be held in custody for no less than six months, during which time he must do Mr. Hindersnot's laundry. What? I'm going to miss him, too. Your Honor, I object. Yes, I would, too. This meeting is over. 
A week later, the Bat Free Building, 2.32 p.m. Well, Mr. Bell, I must say that was a successful trial for yours truly. <laughs> How do you figure that, Brad? Well, Mr. Bell, I made a name for myself. Even though you can't say that name in mixed company. All I need now, Mr. Bell, is one more case to put me in the headlines and set me off on my career. Well, Brad, it'd have to be something pretty unusual and... and... What's that noise outside? I don't know. Let me open up the window here. My goodness, Mr. Bell. It's a tank. A tank? It's driving down the road, running over cars and shooting at buildings, and it's being driven by a fish. Mr. Bell, it's a fish tank. I'm off. Brad Mugworth, attorney at law to the rescue. You've been listening to Bells in the Bat for episode 168, copyright 2017 by John Bell Creative LLC. You in the tank, pay the fine! This is Jack Ward, and from everyone here at the Mutual Audio Network, we wish you all safety and protection during the COVID-19 outbreak. Join us as we listen and imagine, and together we'll make it through this. Please be safe.